visiting and, and meeting with vice chancellors from across the continent is that South Africa is very atypical and we should be, be careful not to think we have too much advice to give. Uh, but in some ways the advice would be to the higher education system in other countries. I think one, one of the strengths of the South African higher education system is that the universities have huge autonomy. Uh, autonomy from government and from outside interference. For example, our councils are uh, only a very tiny proportion, uh, about uh, four or five out of 30 members of the council are appointed by government. The rest are from other constituencies, um, students, alumni, convocation, donors, industry, etc., and internal members. That gives us a whole lot of autonomy because that's the governing body. The vice chancellors, there is no political interference or political say in the appointment of vice chancellors. The universities here have the right to set their own salaries, um, whereas in many other countries salaries are set by the ministry. We have the right to set our own fees, and that's critical. We have the right to determine our research and curricular agenda. And I think one of the things I really appreciate when I look around the continent is that we have that, that autonomy which is the, f the, the first, the, the, the one of the secrets, or not a secret, one of the cause elements of our success, I believe. Uh, so one bit of advice would be to universities and university systems is uh, try to strengthen that autonomy and that uh, arm's length relationship. I don't say we're not accountable, we're completely accountable, we're a public institution, but one can have accountability with that autonomy. Um, I think the, <coughs> the, the second, um, for uh, African countries, for the countries, is that not all universities can do the same thing and there needs to be a differentiation within the sector. There need to be some universities which concentrate on undergraduate education, for example, and others which, and, and, and probably only a few in the country, especially in a poorly resourced country, that would offer PhD training uh, and postdoc education and that you need to concentrate some of your resources in centers of excellence, research centers of excellence, um, so that you have the critical mass to do PhD work and postdoc work. If you spread it across the whole, all the universities, um, you uh, probably don't achieve that anywhere. Um, the third, I think, is that you want to try to, even though it may mean additional resources in a slightly inequitable way to one or two universities, I think that most countries would benefit by having one or two universities that are globally competitive. Again, most countries in Africa cannot afford to do that for all their universities, and there's a tough choice between whether you go for a completely equitable approach, which means you won't have any globally competitive universities, or whether you recognize that maybe one or two universities must be funded at a much higher level in order to pay higher salaries that are globally competitive, to attract staff and students through its reputation, and that lifts up the whole country. It provides, it educates the academics for the rest of the country. Um, quite often, that needs to be funded through differential fees. So a country which imposes a single fee on all universities is undermining the possibility of having some universities do better. There are other ways of protecting access. There are ways of creating bursary systems or scholarship systems so that the poor can still get access to high fee universities. But if the, but most of those countries have a lot of students who can pay their fees and they're actually being sent overseas because they're not happy with the quality of their education. So that differentiation and that uh, development of some centers of excellence and some um, centers where postgraduate studies is very strong, I think is, is uh, another element. I've already mentioned fees and salaries. I think a vice chancellor who doesn't have the freedom to pay what it takes to get top academics has just got his his or her hands tied behind his back, her back. They can't really make a significant progress because such a globalized, it's a village. Those academics are mobile, they can go anywhere. They don't have to stay there. You've got to find something that makes it attractive to keep them. Part of that is, is, is what we were talking about in UCT, trying to identify a niche or something that differentiates you a bit or that makes you a destination of choice. So I would say that, uh, universities across the continent should look to see whether they can develop an area where they are particularly good or, and particularly good doesn't necessarily mean in research, so it may be good in a certain um, area of technical education or a brilliant agricultural college 
or some area that spe specializes in coffee farming and production as an area of expertise and everything that goes with that. 